Let's take a look at five not so great sketching techniques and what you should do instead. First off, I've got my part. Let's say I want to make a notch in this main body here. So I'll click the sketch button, pick a surface to sketch on, and I'll choose the datum plane called top to face the top of the screen. That's just how I want to be oriented. And let's change to our sketch view. And to make sure that my notch always intersects the part, what some people will do is sketch a rectangle and sketch it beyond the part's borders. And so now let's change some of these different dimensions in here. And let's make this width. And again, for the height, I'm making it big enough so that it goes outside the part's borders. This is not a good technique. So for example, let's hit the check mark. And now I'm going to take that sketch and extrude it. Let's flip it and change the depth to through all and make sure that it removes material. So here we have our notch. Here's why this is not a great technique. Let's say that our extrude needs to change. So for example, this height goes from a value of two over here and we change it to a value of three. Actually, make, let me make it bigger. Let's make it a value of four. Now you'll notice that my cut is no longer a notch. It doesn't go through the part, so it doesn't meet our design intent. Let me hit the undo button and show you how that sketch should have been created instead. Let me choose edit definition and let me go to my sketch view and let's delete this rectangle. I'm going to add an additional sketch reference. I can hold down the right mouse button and choose references and pick this top surface of the model. And now when I sketch my rectangle, I can lock right into the part geometry. There's no need to sketch beyond the part borders. Change the values of my dimensions. And again, maybe my design intent dictated that I always want the notch to be some distance from this mid plane. And now I can hit the check mark. And so there we have the notch in the model. If the extrude ever changes, again, let's change that height to a value of four. We can see that the notch dynamically updates so that it always remains that notch there. It doesn't end up in the middle of the part. So take advantage of using your sketch references. Next unhealthy sketching technique. Let's say that I need to make a notch around the end of that cylinder. I really should be using diameter dimensions and not radius dimensions. For example, let me create a sketch. I'm gonna sketch on the datum plane called front. And for my reference, let's choose this surface to face the top of the screen. Hit the sketch button and let's go to our sketch view and turn off my datum plane display. And let's say I learned from my lessons from the last time and I add the silhouette edge to my list of sketch references. That's good. And let me sketch a rectangle and I can lock right into my part geometry and make it as big as I need it to be. Change that dimension. And if I create a dimension from my sketch reference to this line, and then middle click to locate it. This dimension that I just created would correspond to a radius dimension. Really, I would want a diameter dimension if this is going to be a revolve feature because then I can use a pair of calipers in order to measure that. So to create a diameter dimension instead of a radius dimension, I can throw in a center line and the dimensioning technique in this case is going to be three alternating left mouse clicks starting either on the center line or the geometry that you're dimensioning to. Third left mouse click. Then middle click to locate my dimension. We get the conflicts dialog box. Let's delete the dimension that we don't want. And maybe I need this to be a little bigger. Adjust the value. And that's good. Now I can hit my check mark. And I've got my sketch. I can create a revolve feature and it is removing material. That's good. Hit the check mark. And that way I have 
the correct dimension, a diameter dimension as opposed to a radius dimension. Next technique, sketching holes as circles and then extruding them instead of using the whole feature. For example, let's say that I'm going to sketch on this surface and I'll hit the sketch button and then if I need to create a hole, you could sketch in a circle and then change the dimensional values as you need them to be. And then hit the check mark and we can do an extrude. Let's flip the direction and I can right click over the depth drag handle and choose maybe two next and hit the check mark. And so I have a circular sketch that's extruded as a cut being used as a hole. Generally, use the hole feature if it's always going to be circular or if it could possibly change so it has a counterbore, countersink. There's a lot more flexibility with the hole feature rather than doing an extruded circle. About the only situation where I say use a circle and then extrude it is if there's a chance that this circle needs to change into a slot. For example, I can delete this and go to the palette. Inside of here, I can go to the shapes and grab the racetrack and drop it in here. And I'm just going to eyeball it. Let's make it a little smaller. And hit the check mark and then the check mark. And there we have a slot that was easily changed from a hole. But in general, if this feature needs to be a hole is always going to be circular, use the hole tool. Don't use a sketch of a circle that's extruded. Another unhealthy technique, creating a pattern as a sketch as opposed to using the pattern feature. Just like before, let's create a sketch and I will do it on this surface. And for the orientation, let's choose the datum plane called right, or excuse me, front to face the right of the screen. Let me hit the sketch button and I got my sketch orientation upside down. You ever do that, you can always go back to the sketch setup. Choose this to face the left side of the screen. There we go. Now I've got the orientation the way that I want. And so what I mean by this is what some people will do if they need to create a pattern of holes on here, they will sketch some circles. Oops, let's snap into equal diameter. And for simplicity, oops, let me uh, create in a center line so I can do a mirror. And select all my different circles, mirror about the center line. And so this is what people do, and then they'll take their sketch and extrude it. And just like before, we can flip so that automatically turns into a cut. And then go to two next. And so here we have essentially a pattern of holes. This is not a good technique. The pattern feature has a lot more power associated with it. So for example, let me select my sketch and I'm going to delete it. Okay, here's what you should do instead. Let's take a look at this. I am going to create a sketch, sketch on this surface, and let's choose this surface to face the top of the screen hit the sketch button and I'm going to go to my sketch view. Let's turn off our datum plane display. I'm going to turn on my datum point display and I'm going to create points from the datum group. Let me create point here. And let's throw in a center line like before. Select the points and then mirror about the center line. So here I have these different point features. Let's hit the check mark. And now I'm going to create a hole feature. And I'm going to create it on the PNT0. Let's change that diameter to something that's manageable. And right click on the depth. Let's make it to next and hit the check mark. So now I've got this hole in here. I can use the pattern tool and change the pattern type to point 
and then select that previous sketch and hit the check mark. And the reason that this is more powerful is that I can always edit definition of the pattern. Excuse me, wrong feature. I can always edit definition and click on these different preview dots if for some reason certain instances needed to go away. And now I hit the check mark. And it's a lot more flexible for making changes later on. Last sketching technique that should be avoided, using the project or offset edge commands in sketch mode that make references to other parts. For example, I'm here in this assembly. Let's create a brand new part. And I'm going to use my default template. And I'm going to locate it using the default constraint. Let's activate the new part. And now I'm going to create my sketch and I choose to another surface from another part as a sketch reference. That's bad to begin with. And then I'm going to use the project command to grab a bunch of edges from other parts. And I'm just picking them one by one. And then to connect these sketches up, let's use the two tangent line. Oh, make another one down here. And let's use delete segment so that we can end up with an enclosed loop. Hit the check mark. Now I could take my sketch and extrude it in order to make my geometry in my new part. What I've just done is created a part with a whole bunch of direct external references to another part. This is not the preferred method. What I really should do after I delete these different features is create a data sharing feature that references the geometry that I need. For example, I could create a copy geometry feature and just grab this one single surface. Then if I open up this part in its own separate window, I've got the necessary references that I need in here in order to create my sketch and then my extrudes. And then when I'm done creating my solid geometry, I can hide the copy geometry feature. But the reason that data sharing features are recommended is that you have a lot more control over them. For example, you can go to what's called update control and you can change from the default automatic update to manual update or no dependency. And even in later versions, they have this manual update with notifications. That way you can control the dependencies between this current part model and the original source model of the geometry. They're just much preferable means of data management using data manage, excuse me, data sharing features as opposed to direct external references. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.